This podcast is powered by The Plug. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hustle Bunny. I am your host, August Sky, And I am Hunter Stallion, your co-host. And welcome back, everyone. I hope you guys all had a great three-day weekend. I guess, like, things kind of get beside me because I don't work like a normal schedule. I feel you. I'm with you. You know? <laughs> We're in our own universe. Mm-mm, Time mm-mm. travels differently for us. us exactly. Sex every day we work, so every day is kind of a holiday when we kind of want it, you know? So, I mean, just myself, I took off the last, uh, like, two weeks of August to celebrate my birthday, so. I would um, hope so. Hello. Yeah, so it was, a, it was a good time. How about yourself? Did you do anything with your extra day? Did you and your partner? Because um, like, he works a normal kind of, like, nine to five, he right? He works normal. Uh, I have a second job that I do on Sundays. I do sound engineering for a church. So Sunday is a regular work day for me. So if anything, my weekend starts now, like I'm, on Tuesday, I'm pretty much chilling until like the weekend starts. Um, but it was very good. I think we needed that day. You know what? I love the fact that you like work for a church. Like it's kind of like a sexy taboo. <laughs> right? I feel like your whole like your whole existence is a taboo. You got the race play. You're working at a church. Like we love Girl, that. They don't even know what they got. <laughs> I love it. I convince people that I am a normal human every single week, and I don't know how I do it. No, I feel that 100%. I feel like I still I still convince people that, like, I am some sort of, like, um, work in some sort of cubicle, or they think I'm, like, a like right? a lawyer or something. I think I'm like, oh, I'm just a personal assistant for some billionaire man in the world, right? Oh, like, no. I guess, like, that's what people just, like, assume that I do. Of course. I'm like, yeah, of I'll course. I'm the Esquire. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But for the Esquire part, you probably change the wire and put or at the end, escort, and then you got your girl. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's and a that's terrible thing to that. say. <laughs> Well, anyways, today's episode is going to be a topic that I think a lot of us find near and dear to our heart and just um, something that we all are working on, myself included, is mental health, which I think is important in any facet of life. But we're going to be talking about mental health in the sex worker industry, just because we do take on a lot and the world perceives us in such a different way that I think it's very important for us to talk about how to separate our personal life from our work life and how to handle all certain aspects of it. So, yes. (laughs) So, I mean, they say help is wealth, like, you know, in order to be, you know, out there and, you know, getting millions of views like we do, like, you kind of have to, like, be a little bit guarded, I've realized, like, especially as the years have come on doing adult work, like, I'm definitely way more guarded with my shit now than I ever was before, even though I'm very out there. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, what does that look like for you, especially because, you know, you've been, like, you've been on one lately, you've been getting awards, I I see you on Instagram, (laughs) LA, like, Maybe talk about what it takes to like have that kind of momentum and like, you know, how do we, how do you manage that? You know, um, I'm glad you said that. Like the more and more, the longer and harder you, you, you're in the industry, you tend to put up a little bit more of a guard and it's not like a guard of like, you're trying to keep people out, but I think it's to keep out unwanted energy and unnecessary, um, inconsistencies that kind of dilute what we're trying to do within ourselves, right? So when, for myself personally, when I have to separate from being August guy to just my normal everyday self, I tend to find myself hanging out with people who aren't directly in the industry, I should say. I try not to get involved in, um, too much like social media drama, too much industry drama. I really keep it just on like a work and like a work work basis because I feel like I find that to be easier for me. Um, just because I've come to find when I have worked in like the strip club and different things like that, you kind of get involved in all the drama and then it kind of takes away from what you're trying to get done. It takes away from like your branding. It takes away because I I really focus on like trying to help other people 
Um, and like, if you get caught up in the drama at work, then you're just like, oh, every time that I come in, well, we can't talk to this girl. We can't talk to this person because right. this person did this. And then you realize that like, I'm ignoring customers or like, maybe let's say like this customer likes me and the girl that you're not talking to. Now that kind of fucks up my money. Cause I got a ride for this person, you know, right, right. you know, and you never want to fuck up your money. So I just kind of learned how to, um, distance myself from certain things. So I'm not quite sure how you do that especially coming from um, a different city and moving into Denver where you don't have too much of like a social circle but you've definitely grown it over time absolutely I think for me it's been kind of the same I mean I when I started this journey you know like I mentioned I was kind of on food stamps I was on unemployment and so mm-hmm. you know to quickly start OnlyFans and then a year later to be moving to you know Denver which is very a very expensive city that mm-hmm. definitely like threw some people off and it's it's weird because it's like I'm I'm not afraid to show that I'm doing well and that I'm doing successful, but I also don't feel the need to talk about what I do or talk Mm -hmm. about the fact that I have made money in sex work. And so it's been very interesting, like having that humility, but it's like a silent fuck you humility. You know what I mean? Just being able to be like, you know, I'm on my shit now and, you know, I figured out something that works for me and, you know, wanting that for everybody, but knowing that, you know, I figured out a way that, that just really settles for me. And I don't know, honoring that as much as I can. No, I love that. Um, I do like that, like hustle in silence and get the bag because that's what I do. I try not to, I, I try not to like glow or like try and bring people down. It's like either you fuck with me or you don't. But I, the the biggest thing is that I fuck with me, and that's all that really counts. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I don't know. It, it took me a long time to get to that point. Um, and I think that just within recently within myself, I actually just turned thirty this past month, and. Turning 30 for me definitely has, I don't know, I feel like I just like shed this like layer to like I really came into like my full self. And I just feel like a difference. I feel like a full like grown confident woman. I feel like I don't have like the time for like bullshit. Like I'm like discovering things about myself that I was like, damn girl, like it took you 30 years to get to this point to be like, you know what I mean? Of like, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is how I want to be treated. This is how I want to spend my time. This is how I want to, this is how I want to share my time with people that I love or really care about. Um, And it does take some time, you know, it does take time to shed those layers and really say like, I don't give a fuck. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I I think think it's from, go ahead. Oh no. I was just going to say, I think for me, um, doing adult work kind of like unlocked an alter ego for me because I Mm -hmm. feel like Hunter Stallion is way more confident and out there than you like, you know, the me underneath. And so being able to tap into that and also kind of like drawing from my background in spoken word, like I didn't realize how they all overlap together. And so that's been like a huge part of constructing my persona and being able to draw from it. But, you know, thinking about mental health and the fact that we've both been in the industry for a minute now, you know, we've yeah, in, yeah. we paid our taxes a couple of years in a row. Yes. It's like we're in it now. Right. And so I know... I know for me, what mental health kind of looked like, um, especially early on, is like there was a point where I was filming a scene every single day, you know, for three months straight. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was fun and we were getting all kinds of audience feedback. But after a while, I'm like, I don't normally have sex this much. Like this is, right. you know, it's exciting and I'm riding the wave, but this isn't normally how I, you know, behave. And so at a certain point, I really dialed it down to the point where now I film like one or two scenes a month or I'll film something in advance and post it and, you know, being able to be comfortable with that and knowing that my audience is going to come and go no matter what I do. Mm -hmm. If I'm making content that I'm into and I'm feeling it when I do it, then that's the kind of stuff that I want people to see and that I'm proud of. So I wonder what does that kind of look like for you? Um, Because I know you've had a lot going on lately, like getting awards, you like a little hospital visit. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So I... (laughs) I am kind of like, okay, so I guess there's one thing. It's like, this is also part of like my mental health thing is I'm kind of like a private person. But with the podcast, I like to share because I feel like there's more people that will connect and resonate with you the more that you kind of share and experience it. So um, I like... So July was a crazy month for me. It was busy. I think I worked, I think I did something like 22 scenes or something along those lines. And that was like scenes. I did some content. I had to like stay on top of everything. And the biggest thing for me is um, if I have a routine, I'm good. Once my routine kind of starts to like get out, you know, get off the, get off the rails or like I try to take on too much because I get like overzealous and I want to like, 
I want to, because it's like exciting. You're like, I'm making money. I'm showing up. I'm excited. I'm out here. I'm working. I'm, my name is popping off and I want to do as much as possible um, without realizing that when you're putting in like that physical work, it really does take a toll on you. So the one thing that happened to me is that I ended up getting a UTI and I took antibiotics for the UTI. And it, I guess it was just like aggressive enough to where like my body didn't um, didn't respond to taking the antibiotic. And then after I had taken the first round, I decided to keep working because it was like, I didn't see any, I, there, like I wasn't having any sort of physical pain or anything that was like showing. And then plus like, you know, UTI, like, you know, obviously like my test came back, like clean. So I was like, okay, like back to work. Like I did my seven days of antibiotics and back to it. Um, kind of find out, like I got, I got really, really sick one night when I was, um, when I was at home, I just got like this really bad pain in the middle of the night and I, it just woke me up and I was like, well, this isn't normal. I know my body enough to know that like this isn't normal. So I woke up the next day and I took myself to urgent care and the UTI had turned into a kidney infection. So it was so it just when I tell you that was like the most painful, like that most painful feeling because I've never had anything like that before. I've never had any major health conditions that have ever taken me down like that. But I got a kidney infection. So when they got there, they immediately gave me a like a shot to protect my kidneys from from like what from it like spreading even harder. Then I was on more medication. Yeah, then I was on more medication. And then I was just like feeling like shit. So I just I had to take I had to take a break, right? So after that happened, um, I had some like some just like some mental health things going on, some like relationship, past partner problems going on. So without working and then being on these antibiotics and everything caught up to me. So I was just having a full blown, just really bad anxiety attacks and panic attacks because everything, I think just everything hit me at once, just being exhausted. I didn't realize I was exhausted from working. I didn't realize that I was, I, I was taking on so much. I didn't realize that I was, you know, stressing myself out about saying like, Hey, I haven't posted. I haven't made content because I'm on set. And I just, I didn't really realize that like, the other stress that it is, because like I said, when I'm on set, I fucking love being on set. It's exciting. It's the best part of my day. Right. But then you forget that there's like all this other extracurricular activity that you have to do to keep like your branding. And I think for both of us, we both still run our, our own accounts and it does get it does get very overwhelming. So I had to take Absolutely. a step back. Yeah. So I took a step back. I know this is like a long winded story, but um, I did have no, to take a you're, step back. You're... <laughs> Yeah, I did have to take a step back. I did have to do like a cleanse and a detox. And then like after I got off the antibiotics, I was like, okay, like back on the routine, back at the gym, back to saying like writing down these things and journaling. And I know that sounds so like silly, but like just within the past like week that I have been back on track, like I feel so much better and setting up me going to bed at a certain time, waking up at a certain time like I was doing. So, I mean, I think just getting back on track and like setting those boundaries within yourself has been such a huge part for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, you've been through it. When we yes. say sex work, when we say sex work, like that's what the fuck it means. Like work is real. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I think people need to hear that things like that happen because, you know, we sometimes only show like the glamorous part of being a sex worker and it's like, mm -hmm. no, we, we get UTIs. There are all those things out there yeah, have to manage yeah. them. And like, it's crazy hearing all this. Cause like, even like while you were in the hospital, you were still texting us trying to figure out when we're going to do the next podcast. Like you were still like in that work mode. And so I think it's helpful for people to know that like, everyone has a limit and sometimes when we're dialed in we don't know that we've reached our limit and sometimes something has to happen with our body or with our health or sometimes both before it's like hold on slow the fuck down like i know you want to take over the world but like you need that time and so i think that's really powerful to hear and i'm, I'm glad you're willing to share all about us because we're just happy that you're doing okay yeah i feel so much better and like you said i think like sometimes like our body just shows us a sign that says hey like enough is enough girl like you got to sit down you know like you're doing too much um so i know you said that like when you were becoming like you know hunter stallion you like 
how like how was that transition for you because i feel like you're in a new city you're doing content full time like what was kind of like your burnout moment to where you were like i need to take a step back and i need to like chill out that's a good question um i think for me because i make fetish content um and it's a little bit controversial um, I'm going to be real. I've gotten death threats for the porn that I make. Um, wow. So there will be times where I get comments or, you know, someone told me that uh, my ancestors would be ashamed of me because of what I've done. And like, you know, yeah. you know how it can be when mm-hmm. you open yourself up mm-hmm. to the peanut gallery. Some, yes. some random person writes that one comment. And you're just like, ooh, like that got under my skin. Like that's yeah. affecting my joy. And so I think when I started getting like death threats for doing porn, I was just like, whoa, like mm-hmm. what nerve of, am I striking? Like how... But it's also like, I love pissing people off, you know what I mean? Whether it's my poetry, whether it's pornography. So as soon as I get that kind of reaction, it lets me know like, those motherfuckers are watching and they're paying for my view share no matter what they say. Yeah. So if they want to write hate comments, like, you know, it still pays for the apartment either way. And so having that power Mm -hmm. and being able to kind of like turn it back was really, really powerful. But, you know, I'd be lying if I said it didn't really bring me down when it first happened. And it really made me reconsider, like, you know, am I the kind of person that can be out there that much? And am I, you know, am I too soft for this industry? And so Mm -hmm. it was a lot of soul searching. And um, it took me some time. And even now and then I still get weird ass comments from people on, Mm -hmm. um, you know, different sites. And honestly, the best advice I've I've been given is don't engage. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think it was RuPaul that said, uh, if they're not paying your bills, pay them bitches no mind. And I'm very like, on that mentality. And and yes. so it's 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 a mix of things, but you know we're still sensitive. We're still human. We read the comments. We see mm-hmm. stuff sometimes, and they're like, "Ooh, what is that?" And so it's it's all part of the journey. But I think being able to check in with yourself and see where you're at and how you're feeling um, is a big part of it. Because otherwise, you know, we we get the check if we're not ready for it or not. And sometimes it just slows us down. And so it's all part of it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Um, just kind of like disengage in some of these things. That's my biggest thing as well, too, is that I don't engage in people's comments because, you know, I, I've come to learn that people think that some attention is better than no attention. So they'll do whatever they have to get something out of you. Because um, like sometimes I like, could be scrolling and then you'll hit that one comment. It's like, oh, like you just struck a nerve that I didn't know. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and then um, you'll just kind of and then like, maybe like you'll see the comment again. Like there's people who like, they like to comment and say, Oh, like this girl has like a big ass forehead. Okay, baby, I'm ahead of the game. So what now what I can get some bangs and that's just going to be cut. But like, right. why? like that's like, thank you for keeping my numbers up. Thank you for keeping my views up now. Like, because you kept my numbers up now, Pornhub is sending me merchandise and getting my, my, my account higher up on the page. So thank you, whether it's good or bad, you know, um, it's still something, you know, and absolutely for me, I, I tend to like, if someone says something bad, like, is it like a, as a negative comment? I don't care. I delete the comment. And I block the person. That's just like what I do. I don't care what you guys say to me. I've had death threats too. I have, I've had women say, Oh, like God hates you. You're going to burn in hell. And that's just, that was even before I got into porn. That was just me being like a bikini model. You know what I mean? So I've struck a lot of nerves with a lot of people and I'm sure like you have struck some shit that's like, you know, just because of like, just because of like the race play. And also on top of that being Hispanic, like it is just the combo pack of like, of like, like people are just like, yes, they were like waiting for you to like exist so they can just like release all their rage. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like that. And I think that, you know, it's weird because a lot of people, are curious about pornography and the lifestyle. And I've, I've talked to so many people and they're like, you know, I've always wanted to do porn or mm-hmm. I've always wanted to do something like this, but I'm so scared. And so I wonder like those comments that we get, like they're so similar and there's people that are just on that hater energy. And I really wonder where that comes from. Cause even when I see things that I don't like, mm-hmm. I don't say shit about it. I just move on oh, with my life. And so yeah. I being able to like, you know, wrestle the jimmies a little bit is like, yeah. it's just part of it. Yeah, I've I've kind of realized that too, because I'm like the same way. I'm like, how hard is it to just keep scrolling or unfollow something? Or maybe like you were trying to masturbate and it's like you clicked on something. You're like, oh, I thought I might have liked it, but I don't. Right, but I'm not going right. to, you know, we've all done it. You're like, oh, I thought I was going to be, or like in right. the moment when you're horny, you're like, oh, like that yeah. shit was fire when I was horny. But now that I'm like, I busted right. and not like, oh, am I crazy? No, it's right. like, 
No, it's just a part of the fantasy. Um, um, and also, like, I think a big thing, too, is that as a man, you know, I think that a lot of males just don't talk about mental health in general. Um, so whether you are gay, straight, whatever your sexual orientation is as a man, I think that, you know, just you in general saying like, Hey, like I'm, I'm going to give my, give people the space to talk about it. How are some ways that you kind of like relax or just even as a man, has it been hard for you to open up, um, and like talk about mental health or do you have like, have you found it hard to be comfortable talking about it? Well, it's, I guess it's interesting for me because a lot of my background is in like poetry and spoken word. And I was always kind of like the depression guy. Like I would have poems about depression and mental illness. And so I was already really used to like being really intimate in front of a bunch of strangers. And so I think that's part of why I was able to like translate it to pornography because you have to be honest. Like you can't really fake it on camera. I mean, you can, but when you're not really enjoying yourself, I feel like people can tell. And so that's been a big part of it. But I feel like the mental health aspect, you know, being like a queer Afro Latino man in central New Mexico, there was no like guidebook on how to deal with my emotions or how to, you know, be a man, but still have my queerness. And so a lot of it, I had to kind of just figure out on my own. Um, and, you know, and a lot of mental or a lot of porn stars don't talk about their mental health struggles unless it gets to like a critical mass point where it's like, Hey, I'm having to really slow down. So I think, you know, having conversations like this just kind of makes it way more human and way more palatable and being able to talk about the industry and that it can weigh on a relationship. It can weigh on the physical body. Like all of those things are really important, but to still be like, you know, I love it. And I wouldn't change it for the no, I'm glad you said that. Um, I've kind of found in the industry that there are people who take breaks and they come back. There are people who unfortunately they create like, you know, drug or alcohol habits, just any any sex worker career, any career that I kind of feel like has to do with like putting yourself out there because you are your own product, right? Whether you're a sex worker, entertainer or musician, like, you know, like how many musicians have like gone off the deep end with like drug and alcohol use to like an extreme, like an extreme um, case or like unfortunately you get down to the point where it's like committing suicide which you know like you never want to get to that point I always tell people I even tell myself like if I have to if I have to do if I have to not be in a sober state of mind to do the job that I'm doing then it's not for me anymore you know like if I have to get fucked up to start doing the job then like it's not for me like I don't need to be in that environment and um, I've heard stories of like uh, performers saying like, yeah, I left, I came back now I'm sober and I'm doing so much better. Or like, hey, like I started when I was 18 and when I was from like 18 to like 21, I just went crazy. And you know, you're still, you're still basically a kid at that point, right? So if I was 18 and I was making the kind of money that like I get, you know, we get paid to do the work that we're doing, of course you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You're 18 and like, shit, you're living your best life, right? Um, but it does take a toll. Um, I know another thing is um, a lot of the men in the industry, they don't really talk about how they feel, too, because people, they just think like, oh, like, you're just a man. It's all about the woman. No, I mean, I've had guys like open up to me about like certain things. You're just, they're just like, oh, man, like, you're just so easy to talk to. And it's like, I'm not going to spread your business out there because that's not right. my place to do that. Obviously, you felt comfortable enough to tell me things or say, oh, like, even if it's just like, yeah, man, I did a shoot like yesterday and this girl just like really brought me down and, or like, hey, like I'm feeling some type of way about like, you know, just, just like, the, just, I feel like the same things that sometimes women feel like, like body problems and just like men, like I said, when it comes to sex work, everything is external. You know, girls, you yeah. can be having a terrible day. You can be dry as a rock. You put some lube on, who's going to know that you weren't enjoying yourself, right? right? Um, so I do find that the men who have been in the industry for a very long time, some of like those, those big names that you hear, like your Seth Gambles, your Alex Legends, your Johnny Sins. The one thing that I have realized about them is that they, they really take care of their bodies. They really take care of their health. If they need to take a step back, they know when to, you know, they have a set routine. And I think that they're, they, they've, 
they found what works for them. And I think that's the longevity in any career that's man or woman. Um, some of the female performers that I've come across who have, who have, I think have very successful careers are the same way too. They say, Hey, I stay out of the, I stay out of the parties. I like read books. I hang out with my cats. Like, it's like, we did that. It's like, we did the party thing and it doesn't do anything for me. I don't need to go and do all this. I can just, I can keep my ass at home because it's already exhausting enough, you know? And for me. I was just going to say, I think that's a big part of it, of knowing like what your angle is. Cause it's like, you know me, I'm, I'm in bed by like nine most nights. Like tonight Honey, excited, same. we're chilling here doing a late night podcast. But yes. Like, you know, I'll go out to the club. I'll take a bunch of selfies and mm-hmm. then I leave before the headliner comes on. Cause that's the way I play the game. So it's like, mm-hmm. there's no wrong way to do it. Um, I think just knowing like when to show up and how you want to show up is a big part of it. But yeah, I think no matter how big of a name you are, no matter what success you have, like you always have to have those moments where you do slow down a little bit. I know for me in particular, like when the holiday season comes around, like November, December, like my sex drive just like drops. I don't know if it's the the stress or Mm -hmm. if it's just being around my family, but that whole thing. But it's like, I've learned for me, like that's when I want to film less. Like during that whole time of the year, I don't want to do like collabs or, you know, fun with a different person other than my partner. That's kind of when I like bring it in a little bit. But then, you know, when the summer comes around, like that's, you know, when I had my friend over and we were doing three ways. And so I think it waxes and it wanes and being able to find that time um, to really bring it down and kind of bring it home is, is important. Glad you said that because I'm the same exact way too. I I uh, I planned out the rest of my year, right? So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. if I'm going to post a video for the rest of the year, I just need to make 16 videos, whether that's a solo behind right. the scenes, wh- whatever content I need to put out there, it's 16 videos. And once my 16 videos are done, I'm done for the year. You know, like yes. that's period, point blank. I'm the same exact way too. Holiday season starts to come around. I told myself December, I don't exist. <laughs> you know, right. there's just like, I, I think that that's very smart because you don't want to work your way all the way through until next thing you know, it's like January, right? And then there's just right. so many different things. Like you want to close out your books, right? You want to you want to do your checks and balances. You want to check and balance your mental health. Like, and then like I said, it's good to detach from it's good to detach from like your work self, right? I don't want to hear the name August for the whole month of December. Like you know, right. I don't you know I don't want to hear August. I don't want to see my agent's name name come across my phone unless he's wishing me a happy holidays. You know, so. Um, I think that is like a good boundary to have, you know, maybe you say like the month of July, like it doesn't have to be at the end of the year. I think it just kind of works. I'm glad you said that because that works for me too. Like I'm the end of the year kind of person. I feel like, you know, I feel like that's just like when Christmas, like we're done, like after Thanksgiving, like it's a wrap, like the year's done. Right. Absolutely. Um, And also too, like another thing, if, you know, if you can't handle things on your own, as far Mm -hmm. as like trying to take days off or kind of knowing when burnout is, you can't always find a therapist. You know, I find it's kind of hard to find a, a sex worker friendly therapist, but there are resources out there um, that I feel like could really help, you know, because sometimes you just can't do it Absolutely. on your own. It, it's definitely tough. I'm like, I've had a therapist that didn't like the fact that I did sex work and she mm-hmm. was, you know, on me for years and she's like, you know, it's not going to last all this stuff. And you know, three years later, I get to be like, oh, I showed you, but like, right. it, I think it's important to have those, like that feedback and to have someone that you can talk to about it. Um, because, you know, a lot of us are kind of doing it on all on our own. And like, maybe eventually we get an agent that kind of takes some of the stress off of us, but you know, you're still your own brand and you're the mm-hmm. face of that. And, you know, whether you're doing porn or whether you're Beyonce, like once you become that figurehead and you start like having that brand attached to you, There's so much that goes on like behind closed doors that no one even sees to keep that running and to keep that machine and like to make it look like we just turn on the camera and we're ready to serve, you know, all of that stuff. Like that's, that's the magic. That is the magic. And um, so I'm coming right out the end of like a burnout phase. Like I was talking about earlier with like anxiety, panic attacks, kidney, kidney damn near died. I don't know what happened, (laughs) but your bitch is back. You know, all the times that I've almost died this year. Um, Resurrection. Like, you know what? I, I always like tell people like not like in a bad way, but I feel like I'm gonna be like a fucking roach, bro. Like that fucking. I'm just gonna keep coming back. You know, I atomic get- bomb. You can't get rid of me. Can't get. I'm like I'm like I'm like glamour. I don't want to say roach because I feel like that's like such a bad term. But like you know what I mean. You know how they say. I guess a Twinkie. 
Twinkies never go bad. I guess you could call me a Twinkie. <laughs> I'm soft, I'm squishy, I'm sweet, okay? And I'm going to survive. I never, I'm just going to be me preserve me and all my Botox, okay? Keeping us afloat. Um, but I will say, like, some of the tips, I, I do want to share a few tips with people, um, just kind of personally that's helped me over these past couple of weeks. And I will say, like, I guess taking a step back, I said I just came out of like a really crazy time. And then like after the kidney thing, it was just mostly this past week, I've had to deal with a lot of mental health things going on. Um, Because I do suffer from depression. I do have anxiety. Um, But yeah, like it is like something that I've been dealing with for a good chunk of my life. Um, And just kind of taking it face on and admitting it is always like a big thing too. Um, So like, I will say that like, I had a crazy anxiety week last week. And then like yesterday, I like, I think I cried for like, I like ugly cried for like three hours. Right. And I think at the end of all of that, I wrote down a whole bunch of things. I journaled and like, I, when I tell you like I'm back and I feel so much better, I feel like I just needed to get that out. I needed to have that, those terrible couple of weeks there because I needed to like refocus and it was good and I feel really good I'm going to admit that that was like yeah crying for three hours yesterday in my house eating gummy bears felt good it didn't feel good in the moment because I didn't know I was crying but like I just knew that I needed that for myself that's a form of therapy right there and like again I think people need to hear that like the porn stars like the people getting awards the the playgirls like we cry too like it's it's all a part of the journey like stuff gets under our skin whether it's the comments like you know it affects our relationships just like it affects everyone else's and i think being able to really just humanize us is something that a lot of people uh, need to hear i also wonder like what advice do you have for someone who maybe they're just starting out in sex work and they're still trying to find like getting grounded and finding where their boundaries are like what would you say to someone who you know they flew out to LA for their first set of shoots and they're happy to be there they're happy for the work but they're also like damn like I'm kind of like going through it while I'm doing all this like how what would you say to someone like that um I would say anyone who is going into like the the like adult entertainment industry right now is um it's start reaching out sooner than later um because I remember on one of my first sets, like when my dad had found out that I was doing porn, it was like a call that I was literally getting when I was headed to the airport um, to go do another shoot, you know? So I was like headed back to like LA and I was like, oh, like I got time. I'm going to change my name. I'm going to change my look. I'm going to do this. It's going to be a while. No, my first video um, had like two two point something million hits in like the first week or something. So it was like trending on the first, you know, you know, the page of Pornhub. And it was like that double sided sort of like oh, my first video I ever did is like trending on Pornhub, but oh no, my first video is trending on Pornhub, right? Yeah. And who knew that you're, you know, my parents were gonna find out. But um I think like I freaked out for like a while and I'll never forget that my sister like texted me. She goes, Hey like are you okay? And I was like, Yeah, like what do you mean? She goes, Yeah, you know, like we know what's going on. And we just, she just said, like, I just want you to know that, like, I love you. I care about you. You're my sister, no matter what. And she goes, you know, like, you you are your own person. And it makes sense that that's something that you would do. You know, like, it's not against, like, anything. I don't see you any differently. Not like I don't want you to be around my kids. Like, nothing like that. Um, but I think uh, reach out to the people in the industry. I remember I came back on set and... I was actually talking to actually a co a male co-star and I was like, yeah, like my parents found out and the copious amount of stories that I heard that were similar, but so much more worse where people were like, yeah, girl, no, no, no. I promise you like, it's going to get better. I've heard people say like, my dad was a pastor and he found out. I've heard like, you know, I come from like this background, my parents found out and like, girl, like it's okay. Like we're here for you. Um, so when I feel like the, you do have somewhat of a family when you are in the porn industry and I know everyone's story is different or everyone's, um, experience in the industry is different. I've had a very positive experience as far as like working with these different companies and making a name for myself. But I've found that I've had to voice myself a little bit more. And I would tell people who are coming into this industry to, to share, to share with your makeup artist, to share with like your talent, you know, there's like downtime, you know, I've, I've found that like, 
I remember I was like sitting in the makeup chair and I just started talking to the makeup artist about like what's going on. And I feel like she's like my personal diary, you know, cause it's absolutely, feel, you know, cause it's like a person who's like, she's, she's, she's in the industry, but, like in a different way. And she has her own struggles too. Everyone has their struggles. It was like the makeup artists who say I do mainstream, but I don't tell people I do this because my partner thinks just because I do makeup for a porn set, they think that I'm, going to be out here sucking dick. And it's like, dude, no. So everyone has like these qualms about it, but everyone is kind of suffering in the same way, but kind of in a different way. And when you break down, yeah, when you break down what people are suffering from, it's like, it's all like the same shit. You're like, oh my God. So I feel so much better that I can, that someone relates to like what I'm telling you. It's interesting too, because it's like, you know, I always pay attention to what my friends are doing. And I, I look at people that are not in the adult world. I think of like, I think of porn as like Harry Potter and we're over here in Hogwarts, but the people that are not doing sex work, they're like muggles and they're just <laughs> moving through the world, you know. Not the, the muggles! Yeah, yeah, the, the muggles. And so, you know, I think of what is going on in their world, like the nine to five, the grind, like the typical mm-hmm. things that you complain about. And it's like, I would rather deal with what I deal with in the sex industry any day of the week than, you know, have an employer, you know, breathing down my neck, telling me what to do, dealing with all of that stuff that is kind of like the foundation for how most of us get our fixed income and make money. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, there's, there's always that bullshit, no matter which angle you come from it. But I think being able to handle it in a way that it's like, you know, I feel like you and I, we love doing porn and we probably always Mm -hmm. knew we wanted to do porn. And it's like, we're where we want to be and and it feels good to be there but i see so many people that are in different career paths and like they're going through it and i'm just yeah. like i wish i could tell them that there was another way and maybe what works for me isn't what works for you but it's like it really is tough out here for all of mm-hmm. us and like knowing how to like assess mental health and take stock and also be able to talk about it is like a survival skill at this point it is so crucial and it doesn't matter what industry you're a part of like you got to have those those toolboxes or at least be willing to work with someone to, to get there. I think it's really important. Yeah, that's 100% true. I feel like, yeah, like you said, we're all going through it in a different way. And just it's important to like set time for yourself. Like there are things that I like to do. So like I like to do yoga. I like to go to the gym. I like to get my nails done. Um, there's like little things where I go where I'm like, the biggest thing with like getting my nails done is I realized this when I was actually at the nail salon the other day was um, I can't use my hands. So I can't be on my phone. Mm. So I got to check out okay. for like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I gave, I'm getting my nail. I can't be on my phone for at least a couple of hours and it feels nice. Right. You got to find little things that help you detach um, or make you feel special. Cause I have a lot of friends who are still doing like the nine to five grind and um, you can tell that they're still like struggling to say, Hey, like, is this really what I want to do with myself? Do with, do with my life, you know, for a while, you know, for the rest of my life, I guess I should say. Um, and you're like, oh no, oh no, I don't want those problems. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll, I'll no. Say yeah, I'm gonna say hi words over here, those muggles. I mean, I, I like I said, everything isn't for everybody, just like I'm not built to be a doctor, you know, I'm not equipped to be you know, an astrophysicist, but you know, that that comes with their own set of problems as well, too. And I think that we can respect each other's hustle. But I always tell myself, too, when I think about it, at the end of the day, at the end of my ugly crisis, I'm still that bitch. And I'm still going to go out here and I wouldn't change anything or anyone that I've ran into. I wouldn't change my path in life because I really appreciate the hard work that we both have put into I'm putting ourself out there, you know, because it is like you're just a representation of like yourself. Like, that's it. This is all we got. We got these goods that we got to take care of. And I think the biggest good is always in your brain and in your heart. Absolutely. Another question I have for you, and I, I think it's interesting because I think with the porn industry, there's never like a set time for like how long the career path is supposed to last. And so like, I remember at a certain point, there was certain people that were coming with me with this energy. And I think it was really their fear that they were projecting onto me. But they were like, you know, what are you going to do in 20 years when you don't look like you're 29 or, you know, this age? And like, you know, the fact that there's no like official retirement plan for porn stars, I feel like it's something that's used to scare us a lot of the times. And so I'm wondering, like, what does, how do you navigate and like generate security for yourself? Not only just, you know, paying rent next month, but being able to be like, you know, I want to be able to look in the future three years, five years and like feel comfortable, whether that's I'm in the industry or whether it's something different. What does that look like for you? 
No, that's a really good question. I think that you, you did hit the nail on the head with that. They always like say time is of like the essence, right? Like time, like time is running out. You can't just rely on your looks forever. Um, and of course I could. I mean, I do gilf porn, okay? Not saying that that's something that I'd be doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why I said there's so many women that are coming back into the industry after taking a long break and saying, hey, like I'm back and I'm better than ever and I'm ready to fucking slay in the game, right? And I think that's amazing. For myself, um, personally, I told myself that when I get out of the adult entertainment industry, like, I think I'm done. I think I, I, I would love to have a venture that doesn't necessarily have to do with the ploy of sex work. But then also I tell myself that um, the opportunities that I've been given just doing sex work are so abundant that it's like, I can't even say where this career would go for me. The, the number the copious amount of doors that have been open for me just within sex work, I can say, hey, like, I'm going to stop filming this, this, and this. And it's like, oh, but then you want to write a script? Do you want to be behind the camera? Do you want to, like, be an advocate for this? Do you want to do something in the mainstream? Do you want to go and do this? It's just like, there's so many people that are just, like, reaching out. Oh, you got this, uh, you know, podcast. You want to do this? You want to do that? It's like, oh, my goodness. I didn't even think about all of these different facets of still being in the industry without being in the industry really, you know, Absolutely. you know, without directly performing, you know, there is, there's, I think Kinsey Taylor, she has her own Lou brand, you know, okay. um, I think look, I'm not, I know you guys know liquid death of water. That's a porn water, but I think small hands and his I wife, you know, like, I think about that. You did porn and now you have like one of the biggest like water companies, right? Like, like, okay. So you branded that shit. Like you just don't know what, what can happen? You know, I think for myself, I would like to still have my foot in certain aspects of like sex work outside of performing on the camera, but I've been given opportunities that have nothing to do with sex, but sex is how I got the opportunity. I don't know. If that's it's funny like, how that works. Sometimes. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I think I kind of see myself um, having ventures outside of, outside of directly shooting content right and I think that's also what's nice is because I see myself like when I say like I'm done I want to do like I want to open up like a like a what I told myself I wanted to do was open up a yoga studio that is like sex worker friendly and a sex positive flow it. and then also my goal next year is to buy real estate so I can like rent it out Airbnb or maybe make it a shoot house or make it maybe make it a model house for girls who are getting into yeah. the industry that's like women owned I really want to start doing more women owned stuff you know and kind of branching off of that so women have like that safety and security or just like a space or just anybody male female anybody who needs that space to feel to feel confident and and good as a sex worker to have a safe space to go absolutely and so what i'm hearing and i can relate to is that like you and i have goals and aspirations that aren't necessarily tied to what we do in sex work and like part of what makes the adult entertainment industry awesome is like we're able to get what we want out of it which like you know, the baseline is income. Income allows security. It allows you to, you know, build forward and stuff like that. But it's like, you and I both have different endeavors that we do. We're very entrepreneurial minded. And I think the wrong person could assume that like, you know, we just, we hoe and we make money and, then, and mm -hmm. that's it. But it's like, you know, we invest in things. We have projects that we're working on. Like, you know, I'm a sound guy for a church and I would have never been confident that I can do that unless I told them that I was a business owner and a brand owner. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't tell them I was a porn star. But I did say, you know, I've, I've created, you know, intellectual property that generates 4 million views that can, you know, do all of this stuff. And like, once you have those skills and you realize that they can translate outside of sex work, it, it gets into a whole different, you know, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And so I think a lot of people need to hear that, that, you know, we are enjoying what we're doing and we can do it forever if we really want to, because mm -hmm. then you just become that hot ass gill for that hot ass milf and suddenly mm -hmm. you're in a new genre. But it, it's also all of us, whether it's, you know, Johnny Sins or anyone else you've ever seen, like they're doing shit on weekends or over here playing softball and doing little yeah. sound for the church. You know, we're we're not always casting spells. We're not always casting spells. But how about yourself? Like what, what like how do you like what do you see yourself doing? Um, so I guess a, a lot of my my first love will always be a performer and a poet. And I realize like growing up as that like shy gay boy only child, I realized I, I've always wanted attention. I always want to be the center of attention. And like 
it took me so long to finally admit that and to step into that. But now that I have so many different ways, like, you know, being the sound guy for the church, I put their, uh, their material together for their service. I hook up all the instruments. I, I do a lot of stuff. And it's like, now I've become like a super important part to the point where they can't function without me. And like having that agency and that power and being like the media guy is really awesome. But I'm also, you know, a performer. I am kind of similar to you. I, I'm really interested in real estate. I almost bought a house last September, which mm -hmm. thank I do God remember I didn't, that. but I almost wish I did. Yeah. Like, yeah. But just even the fact that I can like shop for a house as a sex worker and know that, you know, my only fans money qualifies for my mortgage with the banks and mm -hmm. you know, it's all kosher. It's like, really, really powerful. But all of this to say, no matter what you want to do in life, having a shit ton of supplementary income is only going to make it easier. And like, if I had to survive off of just being a poet and just being a writer, I don't know where I would be. And like, yeah. I know so many good artists that like have the, the talent, but the money just isn't there. The coin mm -hmm. isn't there. And so it's like, now I have the privilege of like, you know, I can work on my novel and, and I can work on it knowing that a writer is who I really am and it's what I am. But if it's being a porn star that pays the bills, that's okay. I still tell people I collect royalties from, you know, my books, from all this other stuff. And at the end of the day, it still satisfies that goal of being self-employed, being an entrepreneur. And I feel like we both kind of have that energy. And so, yeah. Yeah. You know what I think we should do? I think we should start a directing company. It'll be I you and me. Totally be we'll be doing like a porn directing Westbrook. company. Well, let's do it. I, I don't know, but I feel like... A, see, so like that's all we needed that's all the little ting ting that's all we needed what's that called what is that I thing called I, I, don't little, I, don't even little, know. I don't know but that's all little now we're official. we're official we're official we're going into business look so, out for us i want to know what kind of what kind of what, what would be right like what what would be like our like genre I don't know. I feel like we could just like literally be almost like a softcore talent agency. I mean, you and I know lighting. We know how to set everything up. Like oh, yeah. being able to steal what we know from all of the staff that kind of work for us to put scenes together. As soon mm. as you do it yourself and you slap a price tag on it, you basically have a business. I'm here for it. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Look right? out! We're coming 2035. Look out. look out for that! We got the little snap snap. That's all you need. I don't even know what this call. I'm gonna call it a snap snap because snapper. I don't know any of her. A little snapper. If you see us coming, we're coming to a porn set near you. Boom. Exactly. And I just wanna um before we wrap up here, I just wanna mention a couple of um pages to follow that I found that help with like sex workers. The biggest one is called Pineapple, Pineapple Sex Workers. So pineapple is, you know. The, a safe word for sex, you know, when people are like, oh, what are you going to call? Say pineapple. Um, but they are nothing but a sex worker friendly um, therapy outreach group. And um, if you guys want to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, all that, they are very amazing to work with. They have a list of therapists. You can have, there's a list of porn stars and adult performers that are on there as well, too, who support this cause, which I think is beautiful and amazing. Um, just for like our everyday kind of people who want to learn more about sex workers or like this kind of help with their identifying with their sexuality or whatever qualms that they have. Maybe their partner is a sex worker. Maybe you're thinking about getting into sex work or just kind of understanding um, all, of, all, of, all of sex as a whole. Uh, there is this wonderful um, woman. I hope I, I identified her the right way. I don't ever want to misgender somebody. I'm just going to say she right now. I'm sorry. Um, but it's called Sex with Ashley and she's a sex educator. She's a woman of color and she is very well spoken and you can follow her on Instagram as well too. Um, and you can follow most of my friends who like, they really do be posting about like sex positivity and helping others kind of understand, um, about sex, sexuality, mental health, and all those fun things. And as always, if you're interested um, in August Sky's work, how can they get a hold of you? What's the best way? I know there's a lot now. Oh, there's everything. I mean, I might not get back in time, but always, you best believe I'm always going to get back to you. But I feel like the best way is you can always reach out to the Hustle Bunny Instagram page. You can reach out to the Plug Podcast if you guys have any questions. You guys can reach me at August Sky with an E x at gmail.com hustlebunny.podcast at gmail.com those are probably the two best ways to get to me my main instagram page is just filled with unsolicited dick pics and like like shit cam requests everyone oh, yeah. everybody wants a toilet cam and it's just like wow you guys are real like this is crazy it's getting out of control oh 
I don't want to do it. <laughs> and if people wanted yeah. to reach out to you, how can they, how can, they, and you know, also too, I think like the one thing I want to touch on before we wrap this up, the spoken word poetry and the fact that you are a novelist and that is, that is an amazing way to express yourself. So Absolutely. I just wanted to, I wanted to uh, make note of that. That's a huge, that's a huge thing. And if people wanted to um, know more about that or kind of hear your journey through that and kind of, you know, give people like a platform to be heard, how could they reach out to you? Um, as always, uh, I'm over here on OnlyFans.com. Look at that. I feel unprofessional. Right. I'm no, unprofessional. Okay, we'll get you one. We'll get you one. Uh, I'm also on Just for Fans as well. Um, if you Google Wasp Hunter, I am like the first eight or nine results. So, I mean, we co-opted that Damn. whole. Um, outside of that, um, I'm still kind of fusing my artist persona uh, with my uh porn persona i actually have a poem about me being a porn star i actually read it a couple of times so i'm still kind of getting out there um i don't want to give out my name quite yet but okay. most of the time you'll you'll probably see me out there um so yeah yes of course so you guys there's so many different outlets there's so many facets of having to deal with this i guess the biggest thing is to know that you're not alone um and that's it anything even if you're not in sex work and you just ain't having a great day you can always reach out and i will always respond um i actually met a fan that way but that's a that's another story another day um but you know we're here for you guys. And that's the number one thing is that this is a great place to give people the space and the time because we're both growing. I'm growing. I'm learning. I'm still learning every single day. So, so yes. So yes. Um, you know, the best content is always made by someone who wants to be on camera, who's in a good state of mind, who feels like their autonomy is being respected and it's consensual. And so this is just a reminder from both August and I that like we all go through those ups and downs, whether it's related to sex work or just a regular career. So always try to find that time to check in with yourself and make sure that you're always doing it because you want to do it because um, that's that's always the best kind of content. A hundred percent. And don't be embarrassed to take the time off. Don't think like, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. What are people going to think about me? It don't matter. It don't matter. I think a lot of people didn't know what was going on. The people who were close with me, the people that I was around, they knew what was going on because they, they, I, I had to tell somebody because they had to deal with it. Right. But I'm happy that I was able to do this podcast and I was happy that you were you were a part of it as well, too, because um, I think it is a big thing to um, remind ourselves is to take care of ourselves. And with that being said, I guess it's past our bedtime. Like, I'm like, yo, Why? I gotta take I'm this makeup to off. I'm like, oh, wow. I might look cute from I'm up top, but the bowl. bottom is like, yeah, I gotta smoke a bowl. We might microdose on some shrooms. We might call it a night. Yeah, I'm you. about to watch some, like, oh, man, I got into Seinfeld recently. So I'm probably gonna watch some Seinfeld. Oh, okay. I love it. I got, it. Some little, I got, a, little, I got a little Caucasian this summer. <laughs> Sometimes you need that, a little white boy summer. A little white boy summer, right? <laughs> I'm over well, here rewatching. Uh... I'm over here rewatching Pokemon to relive my childhood and we're, we're living with it. We're, doing we're it. living with it. We're doing it. We're doing it. But with that being said, stay hustling, my little bunnies, and take care, and we will see you guys soon. Bye, beautiful. Bye. Hey! This podcast is powered by The Plug.